morning everybody uh, welcome back to the channel on a frosty Sunday morning this week it's mostly been in the office it's been terribly wet recently not here but on the heavy land we've got standing water so uh, tractor works very much at a standstill one of the things I've been working on this week is preparation for a talk that I'm doing on Tuesday to the AHDB milling wheat conference uh, focusing on cost control in milling wheat and it's taken quite a lot of research and there's a couple of uh, pointers that I wanted to share with you here this morning so uh, we'll have a look at these crops around this valley on this light land and uh, also have a chat about um, some findings from uh, my presentation okay so these little guys here coming through planted on the 5th of January and as you look at the field I don't know if it's if you can see it but definitely there's a line of seed three lines of seed going up there going up the field so this is uh, Lennox planted on the 6th of January and beginning to show lines further down the valley and we've got more January drilled winter wheat flexi wheat and as you can see just coming through but it's not it, this land's a bit stronger and the plants have got a better green to them but I can't quite see the rows coming up yet this is the 8th of November drilled flexi wheat as you can see we've already been through with the fertilizer spinner it's really coming on very nicely and I would hope the yield potential closely matches that of winter wheat so I phoned, filmed this field a few weeks ago and as you can see now the black grass and volunteers have been all killed off by the glyphosate in fact as I walked across this field and the one next door I've really been struck by this residue and two comments really firstly it reminds me a lot of, of maize residue thick and sitting on the surface but just a reminder that um, it's not residue on the surface that improves organic matter it's been shown that it's it's roots so you need a, a, as fibrous root bore as possible in order to build your soil organic matter as fast as possible hence a lot of concentration on spelt um, which has a very active root bore and the other point that the residue raised was the fact that uh, I was on a NIAB um, base call this week talking about how a residue affects the uh, efficacy of pre-emergence herbicides and um, the reason I was thinking about that was because in this type of situation with this mustard stalk on the surface last year we would have had to have gone in with a dish drill um, uh, the results from the Caladon modification with the disc opener is really impressive so you know I, I feel that I've got a second option there this year that can handle this sort of level of trash but it really it was raised on the base call and uh, I've been thinking about it as well with a similarity to the maize situation my thinking is that really we are looking at a uh, trash wheels in front of the drill if we can create a clear um, a trash free area where the seed can germinate that gives us good control with um, preems because you've got good soil contact gives you good germination because you've got seed soil contact but also you're moving the trash to the side creating a mulch and there was clear evidence from that on that base call that mulch suppresses weeds so it seems to me that really 
looking to that American style drill where we get a it, where it's a trash wheel preceding a disc opener would really be the ideal f for our situation but I feel that at the minute there are limited choices in the UK as far as that sort of disc setup goes anyway let's carry on so the AHDB have done a horizon report which identifies eight factors which tend to differentiate the higher performing top 25% farms from the rest and within these is uh, one of the items is attention to detail and this uh, made me think of John Kempf and a comment he made so one of the comments John made in in one of his podcasts was that he'd found that in farms that had above average performance that the owner or operator had um, unusual focus on the detail of how to actually grow the crops and didn't um, subcontract that to an agronomist or other advisors but took responsibility for that those decisions crop walking and managing the detail of the crop all to himself he went on to comment that this was increasingly difficult with really big farms Therefore, what he thought was that uh, it tended to be smaller farms that were within one person's capability of managing that tended to have the highest output per acre. And this is um, something that's been shown quite consistently uh, through studies, is that smaller farms tend to have a higher output per acre, although their cost of production tends to be slightly higher. So from this point of view, one thing that we're really interested in is crop nutrition and how to really uh, ensure that we have the healthiest plants. This comes back to, I suppose, bricks, um, bricks measurements and uh, light refractometers but goes on to sap analysis, micronutrients, that sort of thing. And well, I had an interesting conversation with a multinational this week. Their idea is sensors that sit out in your field that actually get uh, fungal isolates to grow to demonstrate that uh, it is a live infection blowing around in your crop. Um, very interesting. And I think it's something that we'll be seeing more of in the future as um, the Internet of Things enables more real-time monitoring of crops and crop pathogens within the field. Sorry, I just had to stop because I'm finding this view absolutely stunning. For some reason it reminds me of sort of alpine slopes. Absolutely beautiful. One of the other factors was innovation. Certainly, as regenerative farmers, we are looking at a different, different practices, different ways of doing things. So we qualify under the innovation tab. But it's something, innovation is something that I'm really interested in. I do a lot of reading around the subject of innovation. And a friend of mine uh, made reference to an article in Profi magazine about the redevelopment of the Coon Aero. With the introduction of the overwinter cover crops followed following spring wheat, we're in a pinch getting our cover crops established in standing spring wheats as early as possible, ensuring that there's sufficient growth going forward uh, for the winter. And uh, using the Cunero, used it in the past to great effect, but it is uh, an old piece of machinery. She's feeling her age. And especially when you're going, we are using uh, mixed seeds. So specifically when we're trying to do, I think it's the AB15, the overwinter cover crop, what we're having, we have to use a multi-species mix there and it's causing us real issues uh, getting it through the metering system. We're just on the pinch point between the different rollers, between the micro seed roller and the conventional fertilizer roller. 
and so it makes calibration a real challenge so it's something that I would uh, really like to look at so this uh, new uh, version uh, I don't know how expensive it is I understand it's not available in the UK uh, this year but um, it's something that um, will become an increasing challenge how do you um, sort out these problems without vast expenditure I'm sure it's going to be eye-wateringly expensive but when I've got a significant proportion of my farm down to this it's a lot cheaper than using a drill um, but I'm far from solving the problem so that's something else that we're struggling with on the farm at the moment uh, thank you very much for watching please give the video a thumbs up more next time